So now I want to talk a little bit about Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is one of many possible uh, eventual consistency databases that you might use. It just happens to be the one that I have. I don't have a lot of experience, but it's the one I have the most experience in, so we'll use it. And it's really commonly used to add value to uh, an otherwise acid-based um, uh, acid system. So the history of Elasticsearch is that it emerged from an earlier open source project called Lucene. And the idea was, was to replicate the things that Google would do. Um, it wanted to be super distributed. It wanted to take a fire hose of input data. It wanted to be able to handle terabytes of data at rest, do large scale parallel searching really fast, you throw cheap commodity hardware at it and make it go faster very much an inverted index with value add, with languages, with stemming, ranking and relevance and all that kind of stuff. Um, probably more, far more sophisticated ranking and relevance than uh, Postgres ranking and relevance, which is not, not bad, but it's not great. Um, recommendation engine, all the kinds of things that you might want to do in an application that wanted to have Google-like features. I mean, at some point there's this thing that says like every application has to have a search box. And I think that's a fair statement that every application should have a search box as long as it has uh, information that people might want to find. Uh, there was an earlier project called Apache Lucene, which is really the indexing part of the technology. Elasticsearch is a really smoothing layer on top of a lot of otherwise difficult to do. And it almost is like when you're outsourcing to Amazon, you know, DynamoDB, it's like there's something in there that's really complex. And the same is true for Elasticsearch. There's something in there that's really complex, but <clears throat> you don't worry too much about that. It just, it self-organizes within Elasticsearch. And what, what happened was what started out as kind of a search box uh, feature for applications has become, it's a, a NoSQL database in its own right. Primarily because the inverted index had to be super performant and updated distributed. And there's a lot of really nice things about it that basically made it all, almost out of the box a really good NoSQL <clears throat> or base style database. I am real sensitive when I talk to you about technologies, what their license is. And Postgres is an open source community. One of my favorite open source communities just impresses me how long they functioned and the, the height of the high level function that they have. Elasticsearch is not entirely open source. They use a license called a Open Core. There's a core that is Apache licensed. And then there is this Elastic company, I think it's called Elastic NV, that supports it. And they're a very large company and very successful company. And um, Open Core is, there's a whole range of whether I like Open Core or not. There are some Open Core vendors that I think are monsters that uh, just are Open Core's bait and switch. Elastic somehow is a reasonably sized company that has pretty good commitment to open source to the point where I think a lot of people use Elasticsearch without even realizing that it's not an open source project. It's an open core project. You can certainly build everything I've ever done with Elasticsearch is the open source version. Um, and the problem with most open core companies, if their open source version is lame and then they're like, well, you should just pay. Well, then that's pretty bad. So it's okay, I think, for Elastic to charge for hosting and consulting. Um, but as long as we can do the things we want with a pure open source version and they don't show any urge to sort of like uh, deprecate the open source version or sort of bait and switch you, I'm okay with that. But I just, you take care of that yourself. You take a look at that yourself. Um, and uh, hopefully there's enough of an open source community around the open source parts of Elasticsearch, which is the core parts. Um, that they're not going to be motivated to uh, sort of go evil on us. The kind of the way I talk to you about how I'm, I'm nervous about MySQL, which is not particularly an open core project. It's just um, they could, just because they own it, they can, it's Oracle. So I use Elasticsearch uh, in, a, in a project that's called Sakai, which is an open source learning management system, a real open source, not open core. Um, and we used it in a hybrid kind of a situation. So we, we have a database system, MySQL or Oracle. MySQL is our preferred uh, for all the kind of transactional bits and grades and memberships and classes and things like that. We outsource the file storage for PDFs and things that students and teachers might upload. And then we have an elastic search instance and we feed both the blog posting, uh, discussion postings, and uh, pages, and everything. We feed all that into Elasticsearch as 
JSON documents by extracting the text and then sending the text in as a JSON document. And we also have extractors that read through PDFs and uh, Excel spreadsheets and Microsoft Word documents. And there are extractors that extract the features from those. And then they feed those into a elastic search index as well. And then we have a search UI that we talked we talk in uh, the user interface. We talk to elastic search when you type something like relational into the search engine. We find the posts that mention relational and the Excel spreadsheets that mention relational, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a it's a very hybrid system. We're not really using it as a no SQL database. So that's just sort of a lot of how elastic search has historically been used. Um, probably the <clears throat> one of the more popular applications of Elasticsearch is called the Elk Stack. Elasticsearch, Logstash, Log and Kibana, all open source mostly. Um, and this is beautiful. They're using really Elasticsearch in this case less as a search engine and more as a NoSQL distributed database or, or, an, or a venture consistency database. Logstash is like Logs are the things that all these production servers are generating as fast as they can. A lot of data analysis is done with logs. And so Logstash has basically received these things and then just blasted into Elasticsearch. And I talk, I talk often about how most database activity is read mostly, but this ELK is often write mostly. I mean, it, in, in, on average, it's probably doing more writing and has a higher demand for quick write performance and it does read performance, which, which is really kind of great in that it stresses the underlying Elasticsearch database in ways that you might not stress it, like we don't stress it that way in Sakai, because how many PDFs get uploaded? Well, a couple, you know, couple an hour, which is different than a log thing that's coming out 100 times a second. And Elasticsearch can absorb a fire hose of data. A lot of the early NoSQL work was read mostly, and so it could absorb it at a certain rate, but it just couldn't, it, and, and it had a great read performance, but its ability to absorb writes was kind of a troublesome. A lot of, a lot of magic systems uh, have trouble with writes, but this ELK application, or this ELK sort of kit, uh, means that uh, write performance is really good with Elasticsearch. And then there's Kibana, which is a visualization system that you <laughs> may run into, and once your data is in Elasticsearch, you can create dashboards that just kind of blast the queries out. And in this, you see multi-reader supermassive performance and nice parallel distributed scatter gather and all that stuff comes into play when you want to basically have asked what happened in the last 24 hours and boom, you have a dashboard. So this ELK is a really beautiful uh, use of Elasticsearch as a NoSQL database that pushes, pushes deep, strongly pushes the envelope of write performance and read performance, and it simply couldn't be done with a relational database system. And so you just make the this this elastic search thing bigger and smaller based on the resources you throw at it. It automatically reorganizes itself, and in there there is Lucene and a whole bunch of other things. But Elasticsearch is kind of like the nice wrapper that works around it. So you, I mean, I, I haven't yet done anything with uh, Kibana, but I really want to. I mean, I, I like Elasticsearch. And I like its write performance, and I like its read performance, and Kibana seems like a, <laughs> like a no-brainer. It's pretty dang cool. So, so if you look kind of at the internal architecture of it, is it's all based on REST Web Services. And that's why I say it's kind of the Elasticsearch is a wrapper for a whole bunch of complex things that themselves might be difficult. So in a sense, Elasticsearch is your DynamoDB, um, except that you can install it and run it yourself. Um, and so you can feed it data at a high rate of speed, and you can take data out and get queries. Um, and it's all inside, completely distributed. There's all this eventual consistency. Everything's communicated. Indexes are recalculated, and everything are all like just magically delicious. And we have a beautiful little REST web service API, which makes it really easy to talk to it in just about any language, because you're using JSON and REST web services, and if you're using Python or PHP or Java or whatever, this it's really pretty straightforward. And the Elastic folks have built really cool uh, clients that make talking to Elastic pretty easy from a wide range of programming languages. Of course, given that the data can come in to any of those servers, that's how it has really super fast write performance. It is an eventual, eventual consistency system because the indexes are done sort of after the fact. So any of those servers can receive a new document any of those servers can start the indexing of that document 
then add those to the inverted index, and the in inverted index itself is widely distributed. And then so the newly indexed documents are sent across and exchanged. And you know, in a few seconds to maybe a minute or so, they are all eventually consistent. But the indexes are eventually consistent. I think that's probably, I would say, probably because it's really based on a search engine paradigm. The distributed indexing is probably the most is one of the most advanced NoSQL databases when it comes to distributed indexing because it started as a distributed indexing problem and then kind of wrapped a NoSQL database around a super fast distributed index. So this gives you a sense of the structure of the URL um, and the ones we'll be using in this class. It's, you don't use HTTPS. You can, if, you can send the credentials right on the HTTP command. But the key is, is on the end of it, there is a... Um, there's two, two parts of the URL. One is an index. You could think of the index. The index is kind of like a table. So those URLs that you'll see when you start writing code, that's the structure. And it's, again, it's a REST web service, so I'm showing you a URL that, uh, that captures this. So up next, we'll just kind of talk a little bit about the programming pattern for Elasticsearch, but then the, the most fun will be in the actual code walkthroughs.